Hey you guys, what's up? Unrested here, and I want to start this video off with a bit of an apology. I'm sorry there was no Osiroshi Saturday this weekend, but that's only because this weekend coming up, I'm putting out a two-hour episode. As I said, I may miss a weekend as I work on this kind of heavy load for the newest episode, so if you are a fan of that, again, my apologies, and you will have yourself a two-hour episode coming up this weekend. Anyway, let's get into a bit of a sad topic that we got to talk about today, but also one I think we need to have a major dialogue about, and that is the death of a recent wrestling star known as Hana Mikura, all right? This woman was possibly known by others uh, who watch my videos on uh, Terrace House, the Netflix series, which was a Japanese reality show. Um, if you don't remember all the names from that show. She was the one with the pink hair and her main career path was that of a wrestling heel. Um, now I'm not a huge wrestling fan. I, there, there's nothing, I'm nothing against it. I used to watch it when I was younger. I'm just not into it in my older age. But if you don't know what a heel is, that is pretty much like a bad guy. Um, someone who acts like the villain in the ring. And that was what her role was. And it appears that because of this, and according to some remarks that she said on the Terrace House show, she was getting a lot of online bullying. And sadly, this bullying led to her death. She committed suicide because of this, with her last message being something like, I love you all, have a long life, and goodbye. And then her managing organization came to her apartment and found her dead. They haven't said how she died yet. It hasn't been reported. It probably never will be but it is confirmed that it was some sort of suicide, which is very sad. Um, you know, it, it, it troubles me in multiple ways because first of all, this poor girl, she was half Japanese, half Indonesian, and she was getting bullied for part of that, which shows me that there still is a lot of xenophobia going on here in Japan that I don't want to say constantly happens, but obviously must be true if someone gets harassed to the point of committing suicide over being a mixed race here in Japan, which it's sad to say for Japan because obviously I'm the father of two mixed race kids. Um, you know, on top of it, I feel it's so messed up when people can't separate characters from reality. Is there anyone out there who really still believes wrestling is real? We, no one really believes that anymore, right? Professional wrestling, we, we know it's not real, right? It's it's a man's soap opera. That's pretty much what it is. I, not that there's anything wrong with it being fake, but to go out of your way to blast people online constantly, harassing them about their race and their looks because you don't like their character is the equivalent of telling the actor who played Joffrey on Game of Thrones that he's an idiot and stupid and the worst ruler ever when obviously he's not a king in real life. I mean, nobody alludes to the fact that that character and him are the same person because they can say 100% it's a show. Are the lines between wrestling still that blurred that some people can't let go? I can understand attending the actual live wrestling match and holding up signs because that is actually part of decor. And I can understand, you know, participating in the booing and stuff like that. They know they're doing a good job as a heel if they're getting booed at the show. And booing, I mean, come on, that's not, <laughs> that's not a huge hit to your confidence. If you're meant to play a bad guy, getting booed means you're doing it right. Um, but, you know, when it reaches into someone's personal life, when it reaches her for being a star on that show, Terrace house in which she, you know, was just her shy, normal self, which was a complete contrast to her very vibrant, loud and bright colored wearing wrestler character. Um, that's when she started to take it personal. And while I can 100% see why she would, and especially at that age, why it hits you harder, because I know myself too, when I made YouTube videos in my earlier age, I took things really personal, like any attack on anything I made, I took it so personal. Um, the concept of realizing that some people are out there just to troll you, some people are out there just to get you worked out, some people are out there just to like be jealous of what you have in life. It, it, it was hard to even have a concept of when you first get into social media. And I feel like 
her committing suicide is the fault of her managing organization. Now you might wonder like, well, I mean, she chose to take her own life. The managing organization didn't tell her to do that. They didn't say that was a good idea or encourage her. But did they give her any training for the hate that she would receive online? I mean, if you're playing a villain in a show that people have trouble distinguishing from reality and fantasy, shouldn't you expect that? You know, I don't follow wrestling real close. I don't follow it close in America either. So I would have to ask you, the watchers of this video who do watch wrestling, do a lot of heels within wrestling in America get attacked viciously on Twitter and other aspects of their social media? Do they constantly get harassed? Um, do they have their own social media in which they're harassed? I, I really would like to know. And how do they react to that? There's a lot more female wrestlers within Japan, I believe, than there is in the Western side. They're given far more, how would you say, complex roles some of the ideas within wrestling here are far beyond the very sort of down to earth, I would say, episodes within America. Now, I know some of you might say like, well, Scott, come on, some of those shows are like ridiculous. They're getting fights in hallways and pulling each other out of cars and stuff. No, Japan's gets way weirder. There's stuff for like, there's a queen of wrestling who laid an egg that gave birth to a new sumo wrestling you know, hybrid alien fighter. It, it really does get into like weird science fiction stuff. Even so, e even making it more so completely separate from reality, even making it into things that you're just like, yeah, this is definitely not real at all. Um, so it just really confuses me why people would go out of their way to attack a person just for who they are on a fantasy show. Um, and again, I do blame the organization that hired her or at least whoever was managing her or whoever was doing her social media i mean don't a lot of these bigger stars have someone handle the social media for them and i think the reason they do is because then they don't have to take it so personal right am i incorrect in saying this so this is where i want to start a dialogue because now something new is starting to emerge in japan after this happened the ex-prime minister of Japan said he wants to put into act laws that will allow people to prosecute and sue for online trolling and hate speech. Now, when I say hate speech, I don't mean the American term of what is labeled as hate speech. I mean, like, literally talking trash online to someone. And another major player within Japan, the CEO of Zozo Town, which is a massive clothing company here, said he is now going to go after any of the trolls or the verbal abusers or cyber bullies via prosecution. And this man has crazy money. We're not talking some, you know, a guy who's all talk and no walk, like who's all bark and no bite. This guy has the money to do that. If he wanted to find every single person who talked trash and sue them, he literally has that kind of money. Um, so now it seems as though Japan might be heading towards enacting legislation that will allow for people to sue and prosecute for online bullying. They've recently made a deal with online social networking companies in which they have to release information of the poster to the police or the investigating party in order for them to prosecute. And while I can understand certain aspects of that, where I see death threats as something that should be prosecuted, I see swatting as something that should be prosecuted, I see, you know, stalking as something that should be prosecuted, stuff, stuff where people could actually for real get hurt, you know. You know, if some lame troll tells me they're going to come and kill my family in, in Japan, I, you know, I know that's not going to happen. I know nobody's actually going to pay for a ticket to get all the way to Japan, try and track me down and, and kill me and my family. I get that. I'm okay. I'm going to be fine. But there have been situations where there's been death threats to, say, idols or like people in AKB48 or even smaller bands, girl bands like that, who have been stalked and have been attacked and have been get gotten death threats and literally been like attacked to the point of being put into a coma one girl had her hand attacked by a saw when they had one of those meet and greet shake hands 
So it, it's not fake, it's real. Sometimes this stuff really happens. And yes, there should be prosecution for this. People shouldn't be in mortal danger for simply posting online. But at what point is it going to stop? At what point are we going to say, all right, if you disagree with this guy's politics or you disagree with this guy's way of business or this employee decided to screw over all of the people working for him and didn't pay them their last salary or this person's incredibly racist about hiring this type of person or there's still sexism in Japan where they can literally post you know, job ads where they're like, only looking for a woman within her 20s who's very skin, skinny and slim and fit and beautiful. And, and then, you know, some people get angry about that. If if they post being upset or angry about that, is that going to fall into prosecution for abuse when it's like legit things people are upset about? Are we going to end up censoring what people can say online? Are we going to end up censoring any sort of criticism of anything business and political? Because that doesn't look good either. That doesn't make people want to change. That gives lots of companies you know, the will to do whatever they want and say whatever they want and treat people however they want, including their own customers. If I want to make a customer complaint and I go to a place that's the equivalent of Japanese Yelp, am I going to get prosecuted now? How far is this going to go? I know some people might say, now, Scott, I think they made it pretty obvious. They said cyberbullying. But one thing you've got to understand about laws in Japan is there's a lot of gray area. Sometimes they'll state something and then twist it until it fits for the prosecution. Now, again, I wanna bring this back to what the main point is. Cyberbullying, cyber harassing, all this stuff, you know, I understand why it happens and I understand why even maybe some people actually deserve it. But when it pushes a point that someone commits suicide, I think the people who took part in that, you really gotta ask yourselves, are you really fans of a genre in which you would let one of the people in that genre die from the things that you've said and posted online. Is that really what a true fan does? Work over even the people they don't like within that genre to the point of death? It really makes me question the people who are involved in this online bullying and harassing. Do I feel like it's time for censorship and prosecution of those involved? I don't know, and that's why I made this video and I wanted to open up the discussion to you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Look for a new Osiroshi Saturday this Saturday. Until next time, I'm Unrested. I'll talk to you again soon.